what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> you know why I can say that? Does anybody uh, think that life is completely unpredictable? Oh. Oh. Let me tell you what. How many of us are walking along through life and we're going through some junk right now? I think we're all going through it. We all go through things. It doesn't matter how pretty it looks on the outside. There's always someone going through something, always going through something. And so I hope what you get today will give you a little bit of hope moving further and looking and being able to change your perspective because that's all it is. It's up here. The enemy plays so hard with this up here. And he tries to make you look at everything in a negative perspective. But if we can take and just give that devil a big old black eye yeah. and change our perspective about things and the way that we look at things, we're going to be able to take and conquer everything that God needs us to. So if we look, and uh, I, I know I get a lot of y'all and I appreciate it. You watch my little snippets in the morning. Uh, a couple weeks ago, or even this week, I don't know, I lost track. I don't know what I ate yesterday, so I don't know when I talked about it. Um, we find ourselves sometimes saying, I don't know how much more I can take. I don't know how much more I can take. You have got to stop saying that. You have got to stop rehearsing that in your mind because what you're doing is you're whistling for the devil and saying, hey, I just told you, you're winning. You're telling the enemy that he's winning because you're saying, I can't do no more. I can't do no more. Instead of saying that, you need to flip it and call out to God. He's not expecting you to do more. He's expecting you to call on him to use his strength to bring you forward, to be able to continue moving forward. You don't have to do this on our own. And I know us women in here, I am so guilty. I am so guilty. To be able to get everything done, you feel like you have to do it. You have to do it. You know that it's going to get done right because you're going to be able to be the one to do it. Sometimes you have to allow others to mess up before you're able to look and say, okay, I don't have to do it all. I have to empower them to do better. Don't you think God's looking at us and saying the same thing? He knows that we're going to mess up, but he's right there waiting for us to call on him and say, okay, God, I can't do this on my own. I don't have the strength to continue moving forward. I need you to help me and empower me and give me the strength that I need to keep going. He allows things to happen to your life, particularly trials and difficulties, so that you can build the strength that you need to move on to the next season of your life. So I want to encourage you that you do not get discouraged in the season that you're in with the trouble that you're having. Because think about when working out, and I always use this, I don't need to do it as much anymore, but um, working out, in order to build muscle, you have to cause stress. That's a big old nasty word. How many of us have said, I'm so stressed out. I don't know how much more I can take. I'm not going to do this anymore. Stress. Let's change our perspective on that word. Let's start looking at stress as a positive thing. You're like, Crystal, you're crazy. <laughs> you're going to tell me to leave here and be excited that I'm stressed? Yes. Be excited. You know why? Because you're building your spiritual muscle. The more stuff that you have going on right now in your life, the stronger your spiritual muscle becomes. You know why? Because you have to activate this little thing called faith yeah, yeah. and believe that God can bring you through it. Yeah. So if you're walking through life and you're just like, hmm, la -ti da you know, you, nothing's going wrong, everything's perfect, I'm glad we're going to have hills and we're going to have valleys. We're just, you know, it's like a roller coaster. There's no one getting through this thing without going through hills and valleys. Don't kid yourself. But... When you are in that valley and you have all that stress, shift your perspective. Shift the way that you look at it. When you start looking at the things that are happening, when someone walks out on you, when someone talks bad about you, when your best friend leaves you, when your spouse leaves you, when your kids walk out, when you lose your job, that's stressful. But what you have to do is you have to look at it and realize, okay, God, I know you have better. And you may look at me right now and go, well, Crystal, you can say that. You've got, you know, your life is put together. You've got, well, I'm doing a really good job 
fooling y'all. <laughs> Anyone that knows me knows I'm just a hot mess just like all the rest of y'all. Let's, let's not get ourselves. Some of us can just hide it a little better than others. But I'm not even going to say hide it a little better than the rest of everybody else. I have that much confidence. No, I'm not hiding what I'm struggling with. I'm not sharing it with everybody either. But I'm not hiding it. I'm walking in humility, knowing and humbling myself and saying, God, I know you've got this because I'm stressed. I'm working on that muscle. I'm building that muscle. Let me tell you about six years ago. A little bit of you all know a little bit about Pastor Matt and I's testimony. Six years ago, left my kid's dad, homeless for five days with three kids, no idea where I'm going, and did I just make the worst mistake of my life? That was a hard time. How many can believe that that was a hard time, walking out with the clothes on your back, with your kids, putting them in the car, not knowing where you're going? That's a rough time. That's when my spiritual muscle really started to develop because I had no other choice. That was hard. That was really hard. And I had the choice to be able to say, I am either going to fight through this or I'm going to fold up and wither away. When you fold up and you don't move forward, you let Satan win. You let him win. You can't let him win. We're not here to let him win. It's, it, it is about winning and losing. We're here to win souls. And if Satan gets you down and he puts you down, he wins because you're not out there being a testimony and showing other people what you've made it through. It's not about you. And the thing that I always go back to is the things that you go through also allow you to work on your testimony. You're not living for yourself. Everything that you go through is to show somebody else that they can go through it too. I've had someone say, gosh, Crystal, you're so confident. Where, where did that come from? If you knew me six years ago, no, 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 no. It would not have been. The confidence comes through knowing that God's got my back. I'm not in this by myself. I know that he's speaking to me so clearly right now, and it is the coolest thing when you can fully submit yourself and allow God to talk to you. And be able to get that gut feeling, you know, that gut God feeling, you know, that you feel in your belly. And sometimes you go, ah, eh, don't do that. You need to follow through with what he's telling you because there's a reason he's telling you to do something. And even when he's telling you to do something, a lot of times, guys, I'm going to let you know, it's uncomfortable. You're not going to want to do it. You're not going to want to move forward, but when you know that it's right, you know that it's right. You know that it's right. You have got to move forward and trust that God knows exactly what he's doing. He's got a perfect plan, and he knows where he's going to take you. Where he's going to take you. you don't even have to like what he's going to do. <laughs> how, how, okay, I, uplifting hands. How many people know that God has told you to do something, and you did not like it? All right, I know y'all, and if you have your hands down, there's an altar up here when we're done. Um, <laughs> I, I'm feeling it today. Um, so, so we don't have to like everything that we're going to go through. What we do have to do is continue moving forward because we know that we're going to exercise those muscles, and in the end, we're going to end up stronger through it. So again, shifting your mind, shifting perspective. Let me throw another word at you that a lot of people don't care for. It's this evil word called change. So we've talked about stress. We're all going to be excited about stress now, right? We all going to like stress. Yes, we are, because then we know that our faith gets activated. And let me give you another clue. If you are getting a lot of stress, a lot of stress, change the way you're reacting to it. When you change the way that you're reacting to something, you're going to be able to be promoted to the next level. God allows these, call them tests if you want, in our life and allows these trials in our life so that they do make us stronger, so that they can promote us to the next level. Think about a kindergartner going back to school. Praise God all the kids got to go back to school this year. The kindergartners that went into school this year, at the end of this school year, we're not going to look at them and say, congratulations, you did so good on your first year of school. You're a senior in high school next year. 
Why don't we do that? We don't do that because they're not ready. They haven't been given the lessons to make their brains stronger, smarter, to be able to work through and be able to get promoted to that next level. Think about that in your Christian walk. And when you start really living for God, you don't have to be good before you come to God. God makes you good once you get there. You allow him to convict you on your sins on his time, not somebody else's time. I'm going to say that again. I, 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 and I'm going to say, this is probably for someone online. You have got to stop allowing other people to throw conviction at you and not come to know God because other people are saying you've got to be a certain way before you can be a Christian. You've got to throw that out the window. And we've got to throw that out also. We've got to throw out the rules. We've got to throw out the regulations. You've got to let God use his timing on every individual to be able to let them grow. So in our spiritual walk, when we first start living for God, and the way that we get stronger in our faith is we have to pretend like we're a preschooler and kindergartner. And we have to look at our friends and family the same way also. You may be at a 10th grade level and they're only at first grade. Don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. Allow them to go through their struggles and be there to support them. And be there to be able to use your testimony to help move them forward and propel them forward instead of holding them back. Just like a kid in school, when they fail the test, they fail the test, they fail the test, they fail the test. They get held back. They don't get to move forward because they didn't pass the test. We're the same way. We have lessons and we have tests in our life and we have trials so that we can get moved on to the next season. But if we answer the questions the same way, I like multiple choice. So if we, I wish life had multiple choice. <laughs> Process of elimination, A through D. And if we answer C, and the next time we answer C, and then the next time we answer C, and we keep getting it wrong, maybe next time we should do A, B, or D, and we'd have a better chance of getting it right. It's all changing your perspective on things too, changing perspective and change. So with change, so we got the stress, we're growing, we're gonna look at stress as a positive word now. You're gonna leave here and you're gonna say, Crystal says it's a good thing to be stressed. Yes. <laughs> Another word is change. Change. If you are not changing, and if you don't have change going on in your life, you are not growing. That's what we talked about last time, so I'm not going to go fully into that. But you have got to constantly be working on your faith and having the stress activate your spiritual muscle to be able to grow so that you can change, so that you can change the lives of others. And I would encourage you not to get discouraged when people walk out of your life. You cannot be discouraged in that because one thing I've learned and one thing my husband told me when we first, before we even got married, he said, ministry is very, very hard. The reason that it's so hard, and you can look at this in life also, the reason that it's so hard is because people are gonna be continuously coming in and out of your life. It's like a revolving door, in and out, in and out. I'm like, man, well, why? I just want people in my life forever. Like, like, what's wrong with me? What, what, what did I do? It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them working on that season of their life and you working on this season of your life. And sometimes they don't align. And you can't reach your full potential and where you need to go because those people aren't there right now. It doesn't mean that they will never come back. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. It just means that right then, right there in that season of your life, you have to trust God that he's going to bring the people in that can promote you to the next level and he's going to take the people out. Same with jobs. I see so many people get so upset when they lose their job or they can't find the right job or they're in complete despair because I was working with one individual. They finally got promoted and they were making they started out $15 an hour, now they're up to 22 And then their company just closed. And it took them 17 years to get up to $22 an hour. Well, let's just rejoice in the fact that, thank God, they were able to get laid off and that company closed because now they're going to go make $35 an hour. If that door wouldn't have closed, if that job wouldn't have closed, they would have never left. 
You have to trust and activate your faith and get stronger in knowing that God has got your back. And everything that he has for you is so much better than what you can do for yourself. Trials are a spiritual workout for a Christian's faith. If you start looking at things, remember, changing your perspective. I'm going through something. Anybody that's a part of this church or follows this church on Facebook, we are going through something. I don't even give, I don't even give the devil glory in what he's decided to call our church. Anybody that knows. So if you are on Facebook watching me, do not look up our church. Um, it will be fixed. We are in the process. I'm just going to... You know, address the elephant in the room. Um, and it's no coincidence that this happened on, so I set my time aside for these events one entire day, which would have been either Thursday or Friday. This week it was going to be Friday. There is no coincidence that on Friday that's when it happened. No coincidence at all. Because it was supposed to be a distraction to keep me and keep everybody who's here away. But you have to watch when those things happen, too, because you have two choices in that. You can either become distracted by it, or you can allow it to motivate you. And again, that's the perspective that you have, the perspective the way that you take things on. When something bad happens, you have got to make a decision. You're either going to fight through it, or you're going to fold up, because your strength comes through the struggle. You don't get stronger unless there's a struggle. When you're picking up a weight to be able to... I'd love to have really nice arms, you know, but when you're lifting that weight and going through it, where's Carrie? She, she does strength stuff. <laughs> She's always at the gym every morning. Uh, when you're doing strength stuff, you're breaking down that muscle, and it's a struggle sometimes to get that last. And a lot of times when you're walking through and you feel like you've, you've won a battle or you're at the end of it, things get really, really hard, really hard. And you have two choices. You can either fold or you fight through it. You either fold or you fight through it. Because at that last, that last rep that you go to lift up, you can drop it and be done. Or you can fight through and build that muscle. It's the same with the spiritual things. When you are fighting through and you're fighting through and you're like, oh, I know I've got this one. God has got my back. I'm going through. I'm going through. And you drop. You can either stay there or you pick yourself up and you keep on moving forward. Because the, let me tell you, the reward at the end of that is so much bigger. It is so much bigger. You have just got to shift your mind and keep focus on the reward that's at the end and the strength that you're going to be able to draw from and that you're going to be able to continue going through. So, all right, I guess I should bring some scripture up. All right, Jaden, can you pull up uh, James 1, 2 through 4? So something to encourage you, everything that we go through, every trial that we go through, don't allow it to be a waste. God permits and allows things to happen to us. He doesn't cause them. Don't get confused with this. Because a lot of times um, non-believers or if you have atheists or agnostic friends or family, they're going to say, you know, just like Job, where's your God? If God's around, why is he letting this happen to you? Why did he make this happened to you. No, 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 no. Don't get confused. He does not make things happen to you. He allows them to happen. Why? Just like that first grader sitting down, take that spelling test. They got to pass it to get to the second grade. You got to pass this trial. You got to pass this test so that you can get stronger and you can continue moving on. You have got to pick up that five pound weight before you can pick up the 50 pound weight. You can only be trusted. Oh, I got God now. I can feel him now. You have got, you can only be trusted with five, you can't be trusted with 50 pounds to pick that up if you won't even touch the five pounds. When God is not moving in your life and you don't understand why he's not making a move in your life, it's because God has given you the five pounds and you won't touch it because you're waiting for the 50. You're not ready for the 50 pounds yet because you haven't even touched the five. You're looking over there and you're saying, oh, that's, mm, I don't know, that's just five. That's not a lot. That's not, I, I don't know. It's kind of like these events. I never get discouraged by who's here or who's not here because I know the people that are here, God has entrusted me with, with the word, and there are people online that are going to continue watching months, years, weeks, whatever, down, uh, down from now. It's in God's timing. God is trusting me with, I don't know, maybe I'm up to 10 pounds now, but he's not going to give me my 50 or 100 pounds because I'm not ready for it. I haven't gotten the strength. 
I haven't proved myself to be worthy, to be able to be trusted with that. We are all worthy, but different steps. You've got to start with the five before you can be trusted with the 50. I'm going to throw this out there. Money. We all get upset. Oh, I'm in the red. I'm in, I'm in the negative. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. I don't have this. I don't have that. I wish I could win the lottery. I wish this. I wish that. Stop wishing. Be trusted with the $10 you got in your bank account and be faithful with that. And then God will just start adding zeros. And you'll be amazed where it goes. When Pastor Matt and I first got together, I mean, we were broke. (laughs) Not that we have much now, but we were really, really broke. One Christmas, he came home. His check that week was $42. Let that sink in. Some weeks, his check was $5.23. Let that sink in. What we knew is, and I work too. (laughs) Um, What we knew was at that point we had two choices to continue faithfully tithing to continually faithful giving in our time and to be trusted with that five dollars we were so grateful for to be able to have something that week once you're trusted with that then god adds a little bit more and then he adds a little bit more and then he adds a little bit more so don't get discouraged where you're at just be faithful with what god has given you and then he will promote you to the next level and trust you with so much more because a lot of us, you hear millionaires all the time and, you know, people that win the lottery and then they're broke. You hear about NFL players who you're like, good grief, you make that much money? And then they're in bankruptcy. Why? Because they weren't, they, they couldn't be trusted with that amount yet, but they were still blessed with it. I'm not saying that they're wrong or anything. Whenever you face trials of many kinds because... You know that the what? Of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking. Well, you'll be lacking a couple dollars. Does it say that? You'll be lacking a relationship. Doesn't say that? You'll be lacking in the, no, not lacking anything. God has everything to produce for us. We just have to go through the steps, activate that faith muscle, get strong. Challenge, you can either fold or you can fly, or you can fight. Knowing that the battle, this is huge, and I think if we get everyone, it has nothing to do with what someone said about you, with what someone did to you, with how hurtful they were, with, with the situation that you went through has nothing to do with that person. We are fighting a huge spiritual battle. A huge spiritual battle. Every single, this week, if I told you everything spiritual that happened and that I know happened and the trials that we have faced this week, it would, it, it would just, just blow your mind. You wouldn't believe it. But every time that there's an event like this and we have something to talk about, and and weekly, Pastor Matt, our family gets tested on everything that he preaches about. I don't know if y'all get tested on it, but man, our family, I I sometimes ask him, I'm like, "Um, what do I need to prepare for this week? Like, what what are you talking about? So I can can kind of get ready for what I know is going to come. Because whatever you preach about, you have to walk in humility and you have to go through. And he gets tested on it daily. Don't, don't, again, we go through it too. You have to understand that what God is asking you to do in this season is preparing for you, is is going to prepare you for what he has for you in the next season. So again, I keep going back. I just think it's so easy to think about kids in school. You cannot pass kindergarten and go straight into your senior year because you have not learned the lessons. You have not passed the tests. You're not ready. So don't get discouraged if you're not getting what you know God has for you. He has it for everyone. All of his promises that he has, he has for all of us. The challenge that we, that we face is that we don't understand that we're at a different spot than everybody else. We compare ourselves. Well, they've got that and they're there and they have a nicer car than me. They have a nicer house than me. They have a great relationship. Well, yes, 
but they may be at the senior and you're just in fifth grade. They've gone through a lot more junk. And if you heard about the junk they've gone through, you might be like, ah, you can keep that house. You can keep that car. I don't want it. You know, it's kind of like I heard about, um, ti you know, Tiger Woods with golf. Everybody knows who ti Tiger Woods is. And uh, people, would, people will say, gosh, I wish I could play golf like him. I wish I could be as great as him. I wish I could, or even Michael Jordan. Oh, gosh, I wish I could play basketball that well. Well, yeah, you can wish it, but you're not willing to put in the work. It's just like those of us that go through and are confident and are able to uh, walk in our calling and are able to uh, move forward in different seasons of our lives. The reason that we're able to is because we've gone through and we've passed the test. If you're not willing to go through the trials and pass the test, you're not going to get stronger and you're not going to go anywhere. You got to have two things. You got to have those two scary words. You got to have change and you got to have stress. If you're not willing to accept those two things, sorry, this is as good as it's going to get. I know, great hope and news today. Are you so <laughs> glad you came? <laughs>
So we know that if we continue going straight, we know exactly where we're going to go. We know the destination, we know where we're at. Then sometimes we get detoured, and that could be a failing where we fall down. But the good news is, is we know how to get back on track to get us back on our destination. So it's okay to detour. Don't get, don't get discouraged in your detour. That may be a, a change in the season. That may be someone walking out. That may be a new job. That may be something else. It's a detour. It may be a distraction, but then you can get right back on your path and continue moving forward. So let me show you, I'm, I'm gonna wrap up in a little bit. Well, I said go to one paper and then I got a different paper. Oh well, that's all right. Let me show you six different ways God uses trials in our lives. And this will be real quick. He, uh, if we look at 2 Corinthians 1, 8, and 9, now I'm going to throw all kinds of scripture at you. <laughs> Talk for a little bit, now here's your Bible to back it up. God uses trials to break our independence and to foster our dependence on him. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, and that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we were despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Taking us out and relying solely on God we want to be independent and we want to be able to continue moving forward, but we have to depend that he's going to move us forward. Let's look at Romans 5, 3 through 5. God uses trials to purify our faith and develop our moral character. We need some more of that around the world. All right. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces what word? Perseverance. Perseverance. Don't fool. Don't quit. Don't give up. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. The trials and the tribulations that you go through develop who you are. And when people talk about who you are and different things about you, they talk about your character. And when your character is being developed, your character is often developed, not in the good times, in the hard times. It's developed by the reactions and the responses that you have in the valley. Let's look at one more. God uses trials to test prove and strengthen our faith in him. That's in 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7. There we go. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That's, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes through, it is tested by fire. May it be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a shift in perspective. It's taking the things bad that have happened to us and don't look at them as bad and look at them as promoting us to the next level. Let's look at the fourth. God uses our trials to prepare us for his purposes. Romans 8 28 through 29. And we looked at this already. Again, see, I told you, it just kept coming up. So we're going to read it again because it's that good. And we know that what? All things. All things work together for good, for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You don't need to do 29. I'm not going to go more into that because we all know that. <laughs> uh, God works through trials to prove himself powerful, powerful, and reliable. I think through this life we get so discouraged because we find out that people, we can't rely on them. Am I the only one? No? Okay, okay. You can't rely on everybody else, but you can always rely on God. And he shows us 
that he's always continually going to be there. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Who, your neighbor? It is, it is your neighbor too, but they're talking to, he's talking to you. For you, my strength is made perfect in the good times? In the what? So when do we get our strength? In the struggle, in the weakness. Right there, Bible to back it up. <laughs> Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure. Shift in your mind. Change the way you look. Be excited about stress. Be excited about change. Things are moving, getting stronger. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches, in needs, in what? Everyone's talking about me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I lost my job. My family left. So-and-so did this. So-and-so said that. No, you're growing. Activate your faith. Get stronger. In persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am over and over and over, God shows us that he is loving, he is caring, he is there for us. All of these trials and this junk that we go through, give the devil a big black eye and have them, don't fold, fight through it and get promoted to the next level. Now, when you've been through too much and you feel that the stress, you're just totally exhausted, you need to draw your strength from being tired. When God is using you and you're walking out your purpose, you can only draw from the strength that God gives you to continue on for him. You'll be drained and exhausted, and he'll be waiting right there for you to call out to him, for him to be able to fill you and renew you. Don't get discouraged in that time. In those times, that is when you have to call out to God the strongest and say, I cannot do this on my own. That's when you allow him to step in. We get angry that God's not moving in our life. We get angry that things aren't going the way that we thought that they would do. We get angry that we're not seeing the change happen because we're going through the struggle. But have you asked God to come help? Or are you just waiting? Because if I just sit and wait in my car and just sit there and I don't, Put the key in to activate it and turn the engine on i'm not gonna go nowhere if i go sit at the drive through and they start talking to me but i don't ask them for what i need i'm not gonna get it if you're waiting on god to move he's waiting on you to ask and give him permission to move that's what praying is about praying is simply allowing god giving him the permission to be able to step in where he needs to be. So if you're finding yourself in a struggle right now and you're like, I don't know how much more I can take, well, don't say that. But I, I need God to move, I need God to move, I need God to move. You need to tell God, all right, I'm here, this is yours, I'm ready for you to move now, tell me how you need me to move and watch God work. So I'll wrap up here. And uh, I hope you guys got something today. Did everybody have? <laughs> if you want to come up. We're going to take just a little bit of time uh, for a little bit of prayer. That's why, because I know in the times that we're going in, if I have had just a crazy, crazy week where the struggles were hitting me so bad, I know that other people have too. And again, that's about praying and asking God to be able to, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done fighting on my own. I, I need the strength to be able to continue moving forward. God, you have got to step forward, and I, I'm giving you permission to be able to work in this. So what I want to do is encourage you to draw strength in your struggle. And ultimately, what was set out to bring you down and get you to fold and get you to quit, you're going to get up going to fight and you're going to allow it to make you stronger. So I've got a couple people, if you guys will stand, I'm going to have a couple people up here for prayer and I'd love to pray with you also. 
um, after the song or before if you want there will be cookies and coffee up front we can mingle for as long as you want but I don't want anyone to leave here without the change in their perspective and looking at those two words change and stress and know that that's when you're drawing strength so I would encourage you as you leave if you know someone that needs to hear this message or you want to share a little snippet with them grab a set of bracelets to give them so they can remember and they can draw on strength too because I think often little reminders when you look down and you go oh all right that's why I'm going through this just getting stronger just getting stronger it'll remind you that you're not in this thing by yourself and if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ I would love to share with you how to do that it's not hard it's really not hard at all and it's the best decision that you could possibly make so as we sing, we'll just sing a couple verses. And as we go through that, if you want to come up and pray for any reason, if you want to hand stuff over, if you want to say, all right, God, I'm ready for you. I'm moving now so that you can move. I'm asking for you to step into this situation. I want to encourage you to do so. If not, and you're ready to go, or you just want some cookies, you can go up front. <laughs> so um, thank you all for coming. We are so truly blessed. And I thank you guys. two people and they are my rocks and they allow all of these things to really move forward so I need to let you guys know how much we appreciate Heather and Lydia they they have my back they are the ones I just get up here and speak I've been officially fired from anything but speaking so <laughs> the next event will be seamless because I am no longer in control. <laughs>